بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از ڈاکٹر لبنا فرام پی جے ایم آئی اے ایم سی لاہور دا ٹاپک دیٹ وی گوئنگ ٹو کاور ٹوڈے از از اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ون ان دا نیک بیکاز اٹ کمز ان دا ڈیپر ڈائسیکشن یا ڈیپر اسٹرکچرز آف دا نیک فرسٹ آف آل وی کین ٹاک اباؤٹ دا پری وٹیبرل ریجن ایز یو کین سی ہیئر ان دس ڈائیگرام وی کین سی دیٹ ریجن بٹ Um, to be more precise, I'm going to tell you the details and the boundaries and the contents of this region. So, the prevertebral region is located deep in the neck and uh, uh, it contains the prevertebral muscles of the neck, which are relatively weak flexor muscles and extend in front of the vertebral column from skull to superior mediastinum. They are covered anteriorly by the strong prevertebral fascia and lie directly posterior to the retropharyngeal space and medial to the neurovascular plane of the cervical and brachial plexus and subclavian artery. As you can see uh, in this diagram, uh, let me show you. Uh, you can see in this diagram that um, uh, we can see the splitting or the different layers of the deep cervical fascia of the neck. The yellow line covers the prevertebral layer. Here, this is the prevertebral layer. <clears throat> um, uh, because you have read this topic, so you must be knowing that the deep cervical fascia has four layers. Um, let me show you that too. Um, Here in this diagram, you can see that um, layer one is the investing fascia, which envelops all the muscles of the neck. Uh, layer two is the pretracheal fascia, this. Layer three is the carotid sheath, right? And layer four is the prevertebral, this layer. So prevertebral layer is the one uh, which covers these muscles. Here in this diagram, uh, in this diagram, you can see that this yellow line indicates the prevertebral layer, right? So now you can uh, well imagine the exact location of the prevertebral region, right? Okay. Now, what are the contents of the prevertebral region? Number one, we have the anterior vertebral muscles, which consists of number one, longus coli, which is this, right? And then we have longus capitis, this muscle. We have scalenus anterior. We have rectus capitis anterior, which is this muscle. And then we have vertebral artery. The course of the vertebral artery has been described in my previous lecture, right? So I just wanted you here uh, to have a look at the muscles so you can exactly know where they are located. We will talk about them individually in the next slides. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is the number one muscle, longus coli, in the prevertebral region. Uh, if you have a look at it, it is divided into three parts. an upper part, middle part, and a lower part. So talking about the origin of the upper part, it originates from anterior tubercles of transverse process of C3 to C5 vertebrae and is inserted in the anterior tubercles of atlas. So this muscle that you see here, this is divided into N upper part, a lower part, and a middle part, okay? So we talked about the origin and insertion of the upper part. Talking about the middle part, we have, the origin is the anterior surface of the bodies of C5 to C7 and T1 to T3 vertebrae. and they, it is inserted into the anterior surface of the bodies of C2 to C4 vertebrae. The lower part rises from the anterior surface of bodies of T1 to T3 vertebrae and the lower part is inserted into the anterior tubercle 
of transverse process of C5 to C6. It must be a little confusing for you right now, but when you have a look at it and when you just try to make it out in your brain, I think it's not very difficult to learn the original insertion of the three parts. So this muscle is the longus coli. Now next is longus capitis. Longus capitis muscle, the capitis word is used when we're talking about the uh, cranium, right? So the origin is from the anterior tubercle of transverse process of C3 to C6 vertebrae. And insertion is into the inferior surface of basic occiput on either side of pharyngeal tubercle. Okay. So in the upper diagram, you can see the location of the muscle in this diagram. This is the location of the muscle. Okay. Longus capitis. Okay. <clears throat> the next is rectus capitis anterior. The origin is the anterior surface of lateral mass of atlas and the root of transverse process of atlas. And the insertion is inferior surface of the basic occiput in front of the occipital condyles. Okay, in this, um, in this figure you can see rectus capitis anterior is this muscle. Okay, and here you can see the location of it. Okay, the last muscle in this region is the anterior scalene, scalenus anterior. The origin is from the transverse processes of typical cervical vertebrae, C3 to C6, and the insertion is the scalene tubercle of the first rib. In the upper diagram, you can see scalenus anterior, scalenus medius, and scalenus posterior. But in this region, uh, that is the prevertebral region, we just talk about the anterior scalene, your scalenus anterior. This is the uh, base of the cranium. And here I just wanted you to have a look at the muscles. Have a look at this. This is the pharyngeal tubercle. These are the occipital condyles. Let's go on to the next diagram. Here you can see that this is the occipital condyle and the muscles in front of it, rectus capitis anterior and lateral to it is the rectus capitis lateralis. Okay, so these are the four muscles that lie in the prevertebral region. Longus coli, longus capitis, rectus capitis anterior and anterior scalene muscles. I hope you can identify them from this diagram. Okay, now coming over to the next region is the paravertebral region. The lateral vertebral region in the deep neck contains two scalene muscles, splenius capitis, levator scapuli, rectus capitis lateralis, cervical plexus and branches including the phrenic nerve and the cervical pleura these are the contents of the paravertebral region as you can assess from the name it's paravertebral which means it lies uh, on the sides of the vertebral bodies the prevertebral region was in uh, front of the vertebral bodies and the paravertebral region is on the sides of the vertebral bodies okay now in the paravertebral region you can see the muscles. The muscles are rectus capitis lateralis. This, we're talking about the paravertebral region. Remember it. Then we have splenius capitis, which is not shown in this diagram. We have levator scapuli, which is also not shown in this diagram. Okay, maybe in the next diagram or in the next slide, we will be able to see them. And uh, then we have middle scalene and posterior scalene. This is the scalenus medius. This is the scalenus posterior. Okay. Rectus capitis lateralis. The first metal muscle that we see here in the paravertebral region is a rectus capitis lateralis. And the origin is the upper surface of transverse process of atlas. 
the insertion is inferior surface of the jugular process of occipital bone in the right hand side diagram this is the location of the rectus capitis lateralis okay then the next muscle is splenius capitis the origin is so it is divided into three parts services capitis um so services and capitis but right now we just want to talk about the capitis one so lower half of ligamentum nuchi and spinous process of c7 and t1 to t3 the insertion is mastoid process in occipital bone okay and in the right hand side diagram you can see the location of the splenius capitis this is levator scapulae the origin is from the posterior tubercle of transverse processes c1 to c4 and the insertion is the superior part of medial border of scapula okay now in this diagram this is cadaveric diagram and i just wanted you to um, have a look at the muscles the muscle painted in purple is levator scapulae okay this portion is trapezius muscle this muscle is splenius capitis and the purple one is levator scapulae and this is semispinalis capitis we're going to talk about these muscles in the next slides okay okay middle scalene muscle origin is transverse process of lower six cervical vertebrae insertion is upper surface of the first rib posterior scalene origin transverse process of c4 to c6 and insertion in the second rib i um uh, i just talked about the above right hand side diagram in the previous slide also that these are the three scalene muscles the first one is anterior scalene the uh, middle one is uh, the scalenus medius and the um, diagram the third diagram on the top right hand corner is the scalenus posterior now have a look at this diagram also this is scalenus anterior medius and posterior you just have to identify them and you must know about their origin insertion now here in this slide also you can have a look at the three scalenes anterior middle and posterior scalenes here you can see the relation of the brachial plexus um, with the scalenus anterior and scalenus medius and you can also see the subclavian artery here cervical plexus i'm going to teach you in a separate class then we have the phrenic nerve the phrenic nerve as you can see here in this diagram these are found at the lateral borders of the anterior scalene muscles whenever we want to have a look at the scale uh, the phrenic nerve in the neck we'll uh, just try to find the scalenus anterior and the phrenic nerve is right there in front of it uh, it arises mainly from c4 nerve with contributions from c3 and c5 the phrenic nerve descends anterior to the anterior scalene muscles under cover of the internal jugular vein and the sternocleidomastoid muscles they pass under the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia between the subclavian arteries and veins and proceed to the thorax to supply the diaphragm the phrenic nerves are important because in addition to their sensory distribution they provide the sole motor supply to their own half of the diaphragm okay now um i also want to tell you about the root of the neck now all the structures that pass between the head and the thorax or upper limb and thorax must pass through the root of the neck the root of the neck is at the thoracic inlet and the boundaries of the root of the neck are formed anteriorly by the manubrium sternae posteriorly by the body of the first thoracic vertebra laterally the first rib and costal cartilage central marker scalenus anterior the contents of the root of the neck include the uh, cupula of pleura extends up into the neck 
over the apex of lung 2 to 3 cm above the medial third of clavicle, subclavian vein, thoracic duct and right lymphatic duct, subclavian artery, vagus nerve and phrenic nerve. You've got to learn these contents because this is an important SCQ. Okay, here also um, this uh, diagram shows the root of the neck and the boundaries of the root of the neck. Um, I included this slide because I just wanted you to learn the structures that are passing through the root of the neck. And here in this slide, they are described in a little bit uh, more detail than the previous one. So um, the vessels that pass through the root of the neck are the brachiocephalic vein, internal jugular vein, subclavian vein, thoracic duct, left side only, right brachiocephalic trunk, common carotid artery, vertebral artery, and subclavian artery. Now this last diagram, I just wanted you to have a look at it because um, this diagram may be placed in the OSPI setup uh, for the final stage. So just have a look at the muscles and revise them so you know which muscle is which. Okay, so A, I'll revise it with you. A is rectus capitis anterior. B is rectus capitis lateralis. D is longus coli. Okay, um, E is scalenus anterior, F is scalenus medius, G is scalenus posterior, and C, C is, can anyone make it out? Do you remember the second muscle that we talked about in the prevertebral region? The first one was longus coli, and the second one was splenius capitis. Okay, thank you so much. No, no, students, this is not splenius capitis. Splenius capitis was at the back of the neck. This is longus capitis muscle. Though C is longus capitis muscle. Okay, thank you so much.